Hi students! Welcome back to my channel! We are now in the 7th week of the first quarter and we are now about to discuss a new lesson about two theories which aim to explain all the whys in the previous weeks. Remember, we have discussed the lithosphere and the different types of plate boundaries. We also have discussed the different landforms and geologic processes that occur in each type. If you want to go over these topics before proceeding to our lesson today, feel free to browse in my channel for the video lessons. The title of Module 7 is The Mystery of Plate Movement. The most essential learning competency here is to describe the possible causes of plate movement. Now, why was this module entitled The Mystery of Plate Movement? This is because in the previous weeks, we have discussed the different types. We know that there are convergent plate boundaries. We know that there are divergent plate boundaries and transform fault boundaries. We know the different types of land formations that are created in each type of plate movement or in each type of plate boundary. However, we don't know why these are moving. We know that there is a convection current that is occurring or is present below these lithospheric plates but then the explanation is still incomplete. Kulang pa rin. So we need theories to further explain why the plate moves. And thus, I entitled this presentation Continental Drift and Seafloor Spreading Part 1. Since there is a Part 1, there would be a Part 2 and that would be for week number 8. Upon inspecting the modules for week 7 and week 8, week 7 seems to be an introduction to the Continental Drift Theory and Seafloor Spreading Theory. So right now, uh, we will be discussing what these theories are all about and what happens in the plates according to each theory. However, as for the evidences, we will leave that to week number 8. Again, the most essential learning competency here is to describe the possible causes of plate movement. As for the specific objectives, we want to describe and simulate seafloor spreading. So later, I will show you a simple simulation of this uh, process. Second, to illustrate the convection current within the mantle that could possibly affect plate movement. Third, to discuss how ridge push and slab pull causes plate movement. And then, explain the causes of plate movement based on continental drift theory and seafloor spreading theory and be aware of the effects of the different processes and forces in our environment. Now, let's start our discussion with the Continental Drift Theory. The Continental Drift Theory was proposed by Alfred Wegener or Alfred Wegener. He is a German scientist, so people would pronounce his surname as Wegener. But then, as long as you know the correct spelling of his surname, it's fine to use other pronunciations. So, the Continental Drift Theory was proposed in 1912. So, Wegener was a meteorologist and an astronomer. When we say meteorologist, a meteorologist studies the weather, whereas an astronomer studies celestial objects such as the stars, planets, moons, comets, etc. So, why is this being stressed in this slide? Because Wegener's profession was a hindrance for him or for his theory to be accepted during that time. This theory is for earth science. However, his forte is not in earth science. He's studying the weather. He's studying the stars. So this led scientists to not believe him in his first writing of the theory. So matagal na panahon bago um, na publish at tinanggap tong theory na to. Actually, namatay na si Alfred Wegener, tsaka lang siya tinanggap ng mga scientists sa field na yan. So, ano bang sabi ni Continental Drift Theory? According to the Continental Drift Theory, 
all continents were joined together in one landmass called Pangaea. So, Pangaea is a supercontinent. So, when we say supercontinent, it's a huge continent that is composed of the smaller continents that we know today. As we all know, we have seven continents which mostly correspond to the um, primary plates. We have discussed that in week number one. Okay, so also Pangaea was divided into two. These two plates are the Laurasia, which is the northern part, this one, and the Gondwana land, which was the southern part. Now, if you would ask me if Pangaea was the first supercontinent that existed, the answer is no. Pangaea existed in the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. However, before that, there are other supercontinents according to scientists. We have Rodinia, we have Panocha, we have Ur, and so on and so forth. However, Pangaea is the most recent. It was the supercontinent that preceded the continents that we have right now. So, if we have a huge landmass called Pangaea, we also have a huge ocean during that time. And we call that huge ocean the Panthalassa, as you can see in the image being shown on the screen. So, we have here the Pangaea and then the Panthalassa. And then, eventually, Pangaea was divided into Laurasia and Gondwana. And then, these two were further subdivided into the continents that we know today. Okay, so that's all for now for the continental drift theory since the evidences that support this would be discussed in the next week. Let's move on to seafloor spreading theory. So, the seafloor spreading theory, as the term implies, seafloor spreading, it explains what happens in the seafloor. So, the seafloor was discussed to you in detail when we were discussing divergent plate boundaries because most of the spreading would happen in the seafloor. So what does the seafloor spreading theory tell us? So it states that oceanic crust forms along the mid-oceanic ridge system and spreads out laterally away from them. So if you remember, a mid-ocean ridge is a landform that is created from a divergent boundary and they are found in the ocean floor. Seafloor spreading is a geologic process in which tectonic plates or large slabs of the Earth's lithosphere split apart from each other. That's why I was telling a while ago that seafloor spreading is related to divergent plate boundaries. So, who were the proponents of this theory? We have two proponents. So, first, we have Harry Hess and we have Robert Dietz. So, this theory was proposed in 1960, which was years after the proposed continental drift theory. Now, why is the seafloor spreading theory being discussed in conjunction with the continental drift theory? So, while the continental drift theory explains or tells us that, hey, the continents move, it does not really explain why. So, what causes or what is the driving mechanism that causes the plates to move? So, the seafloor spreading theory was theorized in order to explain what really happens. So, ano nga ba yung nangyayari? We can see in the GIF shown on your screen that there is a magma that goes out of the mid-oceanic ridge and then when this magma goes out, it somehow pushes the existing lithosphere on the sides, okay? And then this causes the continents to be moving. So it's like a conveyor belt. Diba sa mga factories, the, for example, the canned goods, they are being transported from one place to another, not manually but via conveyor belt. New ocean floor forms along the cracks in the ocean crust as molten material erupts from the mantle spreading out and pushing all the rocks to the side of the crack. 
So, new ocean floor is continually added by the process of seafloor spreading. So, for us to better understand seafloor spreading theory, I have here a simple simulation of what happens. So, I used a folder and then a scratch bond paper in order to show seafloor spreading theory. So, anong meron po dito sa ating simulation? So, mapapansin natin dito, may tatlo tayong butas. So, we have two side slits and then we have a middle slit. May kita natin yan sa side view. This paper symbolizes the oceanic crust and then yung sides naman niya, this could be the continental crust or continental lithosphere. Okay, now, paano ba ang nangyayari sa seafloor spreading theory? So, remember, seafloor spreading theory is like a support to continental drift theory. So, Alfred Wegener said that the continents are moving but then he failed to explain what is the driving mechanism for that movement. So, this answers that question, which is the driving mechanism. So, syempre... Ang tanong natin dyan, bakit gumagalaw yung nandito? Okay, bakit gumagalaw yung nasa gitna? It's because of the magma coming from the mantle. So, yung magma na yan, tumataas, syempre, tapos lumalabas ito sa gilid. Yung paglabas niya ay both sides, sa left and sa right side. Ngayon, um, remember, ang tawag dito sa gitna pala na ito ay Mid-Ocean Ridge. We have discussed that in previous lesson about divergent plate boundaries. And then, itong mga mga nasa gilid, ito, tsaka ito, we call this subduction zones. Why is it called subduction zones? Because this, sabi ko nga kanina, this is continental lithosphere. This is also continental lithosphere. So, oceanic lithosphere is denser and therefore, when it encounters a continental lithosphere, it would undergo subduction. Okay. Ngayon, ano ba yung mga nangyayari ulit dito? We have two forces that occur here. We have a ridge push and we also have a slab pull. So, ridge push happens in the middle. And slab pull happens on the sides. I also labeled the paper older kasi mamaya may makikita tayo na mga ages. So, I will try to start the simulation now. So, again, itong nasa gitna natin ay tumataas dahil ito ay magma. Now, if I try to pull, okay, the paper, you can see that the older plates would move to the subduction zones. Okay, tapos lumabas na yung old. Siyempre, anong mas bata? Old or older? Siyempre, old ang mas bata. Yung galing sa gitna, since magma yan, this would create younger oceanic crust. Hanggang sa gumalaw siya ng gumalaw, lalabas na yung ating young oceanic crust. So, that's how seafloor spreading happens. Since the seafloor is constantly moving, it also spreads. Okay? And that spreading causes the movement of the plates. Ngayon, siguro tatanungin nyo ako, ma'am, saan napupunta yung mga nasa gilid? Yung mga pumupunta sa subduction zones? Nawawala po ba sila? Actually, hindi. They are just recycled. So, kung ano yung mga pumupunta sa ilalim sa subduction zones, they melt and then they become part of the 
mantle again and then the cycle continues. So, dito napapasok ulit yung diniscuss natin last time which is about convection currents. Again, convection currents happen because of the differences in density brought about by the differences in temperature in the Earth's mantle. So, makikita natin dito sa picture natin na when the seafloor spreads, it somehow pushes the nearby plates and then of course, whenever a plate somewhere is moving, it could also cause a movement in other parts of the earth. Now, finally, I have here a graph showing the age of seafloor crusts. May kita natin dito na sabi nga natin last time, diba, most of the mid-oceanic ridge or mid-ocean ridges are found in the Pacific Ocean and in the middle of the big oceans that are present on earth today if we read the graph we can see that red is the younger plates and then blue would be the older ones so, may kita natin that those parts of the lithosphere that are found nearer the mid oceanic ridges are younger and those that are farther from the mid-oceanic ridges or the mid-ocean ridges are older. So again, um, this discussion is just for us to have a brief introduction about the seafloor spreading theories and the continental drift theories. So as for the evidences, we will be discussing them next week. So again, thank you for watching this uh, video. I hope you have learned something from the lesson that we had and if you are not yet a subscriber of my channel please click the subscribe button so that you will be updated on the next videos that i will be uploading so thank you very much so till next time bye happy learning